Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Good Tuesday morning to you all. Hope you guys are doing well out there. Feeling fantastic. Having a great start to your day and a great start to your week. I got you an update on what's going to happen weather-wise for your Tuesday. Uh, another quiet day. Um, I mean, just as quiet as it was yesterday, really, but we're going to break it down for you folks talk about each individual region just like we always do and then for the second half of the video we will talk about some things coming up uh, maybe a pattern change on the horizon as we enter the far end of the month I uh, don't want to get too far ahead we want to enjoy the times we have right here in front of us but we will speak on a couple things we'll give you an update on the tropics and we'll briefly speak on a storm system that could affect a lot of the eastern US um, towards the end of this work week into this weekend and yes that means another rainy at least start to your weekend for the northeast i know that's unfortunate i don't know how many weekends in a row you guys have seen rain but it's like six or seven maybe even eight you guys would have to let me know but we'll break it all down for you folks i um, hope you guys enjoyed uh the kind of the ride along i posted pictures on my facebook my twitter or x whatever they call it these days and made the um video on youtube uh made the, the spontaneous choice to uh, go up to the mountains yesterday the original plan was me and my wife were going to go friday but uh you know the kids were out of school yesterday and uh, there was a uh, it was snowing in the higher elevations we kind of went up there thinking well i kind of went up there taking them thinking uh, you know it's a pretty low chance i'm going to see legit snow uh, mixed with the peak fall foliage but uh, that chance skyrocketed as we got closer and i started seeing pictures of uh, others like way up in higher elevations that were easily easily accessible uh luckily and uh ended up uh, just being one of the better spontaneous trips i've ever taken with my family so um it, it was awesome it really was kind of a bucket list kind of thing for me i don't know if you folks have ever experienced peak fall foliage mixed with a dusting of snow or an, even an inch of snow but it is just magical it's beautiful if you're into that kind of stuff which i am so Thank y'all for understanding me kind of rushing the video yesterday morning. I had to get on the road very, very quickly. Sorry about not putting time stamps and I haven't even answered the comments from yesterday's video, but thank y'all for the support and understanding. I'm a big family guy. That's for sure. You folks probably know that by now. And it was a great day with me and the family. That's for sure. I was geeking out for sure. And even my wife was like, wow, you could tell I could look at my wife's face and she was like, wow, this is, um, this is the real deal. Um, just the contrast, the colors, things like that. But anyways, I'm just kind of rambling on. But if you folks have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. If you guys got anything that I can pray about or pray over, as always, please put it in the comments below so I can pray over it. And I promise you others are doing so too. So let's get rolling here. Um, I mean, same general kind of setup as, as yesterday. Uh, this is water vapor loop. This indicates how dry or moist it is in the atmosphere. And as you can tell, we got the ridge is still building over the region. And then it makes a abrupt um, turn downward, if you will. And then you still got the trough over the eastern U.S. So there's no real big storm systems riding this. There's a little bit of rain in certain areas. We still got kind of a weak low way up here in Canada that's going to bring uh, some more showers some more shower activity into the upper portion of the northeast today most likely but this entire region i'm going to put this check mark right here where the dip is nice beautiful fall like weather now in the high plains you're starting to warm back up you're directly under the influence of this ridge of high pressure which means above average temperatures um but in general today is pretty quiet i mean there's pretty much a ridge in areas of the western and central u.s and then there's a trough and areas pretty much all of the eastern u.s so trough cooler than average temperatures ridge normally above average temperatures so that's what we got those are the players on the field today let's get this off your screen let's keep rolling what is falling out there right now not a whole lot at all maybe some higher elevation west virginia snow flurries flying around that was another thing that i was shocked i mean i thought that i would get up there once I got up to 5,500, 6,000 feet in those higher elevations of the North Carolina mountains, I was like, you know, I'll probably see some leftover uh, snow, but it was just snowing like crazy once you got about 6,000 feet up in the air, 5,800 feet. Man, it was wild. I'll, I'll stop going on and on about it. I'm, I'm, I'm waking up this morning wanting to drive right back up there and do it again. One day I'm going to move up there. But um, anyways, uh, we got some showers drifting through Montana, northern areas of Idaho. And like I said, a little bit of moisture 
in West Virginia, but I would argue a lot of this ain't even hitting the ground. A little bit of light rain maybe in the down east areas in Maine. You guys will have to let me know if this is actually falling. Southeast Mass, uh, a little bit of heavier action for you folks, maybe some downpour action. Let me know what you guys are seeing. I mean, but look at everybody else. Very quiet. Very quiet. We're watching another storm system that'll ride out of Canada, kind of an upper low that'll move through and then uh, create a, a pretty substantial low pressure over the eastern U.S. here in the coming days, especially into Friday into our weekend. But as far as storms today, the only area we we watch for any kind of storm activity, man, we about to get two days in a row with with a sneeze. Uh, I think we're good. All right, it is there is a general risk of thunderstorms down here near uh, southeast. Uh, Arizona, Southwest, New Mexico. There, I mean, there's a general risk, but no severe weather expected today. Hardly any moisture expected today, really. And speaking of moisture, I mean, uh, the, the chance of excessive rainfall is uh, below 5%. So no risk of flooding today. Like I said, it's just a quiet day. It's been a quiet month. It really has. And looking at my analytics on YouTube, you, you can really tell, um, you know, I had like a 10 to 15 day stretch there in a row where I had a, my videos were over 10,000 views. I don't think I've had a video um, this month that's hit over 10,000 views, which is good. It's been nice. It, it feels like I've kind of sunk back into reality. When YouTube is popping off like that, sometimes it just feels like it feels like you're in a different world. It doesn't feel real. I mean, it's exciting, but it's exhausting. But it's been nice. But at the same time, part of me that 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 itch is starting to come back for some more exciting weather. No, I don't want any life-threatening weather, but it'd be, would it, be, it would be nice to talk about some, some snowstorms or something like that. No life-threatening events, but you guys get what I'm saying. Wind alerts. Um, there's quite a bit of them up here in Montana. You got some, what is that? I'll, they always got some weird colors uh, for high wind warnings, mustard color. You got high wind warnings up in Montana, so just a breezy day, even red flag warnings. You don't want to light any fires up here. Some heat advisories are back in Southern California, and then just some wind advisories up for South Dakota, areas of Montana. High wind watch and warnings up for a few counties here in Southeast Wyoming. Everybody else, though, Central, the Eastern U.S., I mean, heck, even the Southwest, even the extreme Northwest, it's quiet. It's a very quiet day. Uh, today for sure not a whole lot of storm system action riding that jet between the ridge and the trough really isn't speak on the southeast today i mean guys i'm gonna end up rolling through this pretty quick just because there's not a whole lot going on but the southeast today pretty quiet i mean you still got the trough you see the moisture outline down here in the gulf and off the coast of the southeast that is where the boundary of your trough is your cold front so you know this is basically brought really stable dry air into the entire southeast therefore you don't really get any weather or anything like that and sure enough you might get a sprinkle or a shower or two up here in virginia maybe the delmarva region today maybe um maybe some lingering flurries up there in the higher elevations of north carolina um tennessee um this morning maybe um but other than that guys it, it's a quiet day uh, up here in the northeast, there's a little bit more action. Still got that wraparound precipitation that will develop later on this afternoon. This is around 3 p.m., give or take an hour. Some sprinkles over here into the Finger Lakes and southern tier of New York. A little bit of light shower activity in the Adirondacks, uh, Vermont, New Hampshire. Some, some light showers are possible. Maybe a heavier burst of rain. These will flow through areas of uh, western Maine also. And, you know, they, they could drift all the way down to the New York City region, Long Island. Uh, could get a little bit of moisture into Buffalo a little bit later tonight into tomorrow morning. Um, but outside of that, guys, it, it's it's a quiet day. Quiet day. South Central, no different. I mean, we'll breeze on through this. You guys enjoy your day. Not a whole lot going on. There's that little bit of moisture that's pumping out that that's uh, causing that general risk here in areas of New Mexico and Arizona. A little bit of storm activity is possible. I would argue that's probably where the most action will be in the entire country today. Um, but other than that, everybody else in this frame you see, I mean, not a drop of anything out there. I mean, not not really much. I mean, just just a nice day. Enjoy it. North Central, I mean, not any different, guys. I mean, we're going to have some showers that are probably going to fly into northern sections of North Dakota as that system begins to really slowly drift down into the lower 48 out of Canada. So by the time we're getting into this afternoon, this evening, 
some showers, maybe some heavier bursts of rain in eastern areas of North Dakota. These will drift into the northern country of Minnesota where um, a more widespread light, light and moderate rain um, event will develop. So if you live in the northern sections of Minnesota, some light rain, light and moderate rain will fall later on tonight. Could get some showers that drift all the way down to South Dakota. And then by the time we're getting into the middle of the night, uh, these rain showers will make their way into Duluth. It's almost that time of the year where you guys need to be getting your first snows of the year, it would seem like. I don't know what your average first snow of the year is up here in the UP of Michigan. I imagine it's probably sometime in late October, um, maybe early November. But here comes this little upper low digging down here. It gets lost from the mainstream of things. So when it gets lost, they drift around very, very slowly. So here it is. You're waking up tomorrow morning with a low pressure right over the um, or just north of the, the Minneapolis area, right in the middle of Minnesota, and just some showers kind of drifting around it. So, Western U.S., I mean, for the most part, pretty quiet. Uh, seems like I've said that a million times, but we got some rain entering the extreme north, uh, northwest portion of Washington State. Uh, this will kind of fizzle out. Most of this is entering into Canada as the ridge is really kind of um, bulked northward. So that means the main... Um, uh, the main avenue, if you will, of weather has pushed northward just because the ridge is built a little bit taller into Canada. So areas like Washington and Oregon that were right in the path of these storm systems are now just south of it, if that makes sense. But like I said, a little bit of action is possible down here in south, um, southeast Arizona, southwest uh, New Mexico. You guys could see some storms today. Nothing severe is expected, but... Waking up tomorrow morning with pretty quiet conditions all over again. Temperatures, another nice day, chilly day across the Ohio River Valley in the Pennsylvania, the Northeast. Uh, if you're closer to the coast in the Northeast, 60s. I mean, you get just off the coast, um, probably more so 50s to 60s, higher elevations to 40s. Still another chilly day all the way down here to the central, the Southern Apps region. Remember when I say Apps, I mean in Appalachian Mountains. Um, but once you get into the lower elevations, a beautiful 60s to 70s type of day. I mean, even another beautiful day into the deep south, 60s and 70s. Florida, I mean, 60s and 70s for a high. Miami, I mean, you're probably going to struggle to get the 80 degrees a day to Great Lakes region, a chilly day, 40s, 50s. Uh, right in the middle of the country, though, you're starting to warm back up, 70s and 80s. And you move a little bit further west, uh, high plains, right back into the 80s, above average temperatures dominating the region. A little bit of cooler temperature due to some cloud cover and some rain up here in the extreme northern portion of the Rockies. Um, but, I mean, you're starting to get some hundreds move back into the picture in the desert southwest. And um, just mainly 70s and 60s and maybe some 80s in these kind of plateau regions, these valley regions, if you will. We do have a big storm system coming. I mean, is it going to is it going to cause any crazy weather no i'm not really thinking so but here it comes um it's just kind of lost it kind of drifts out of the great lakes region as we're getting into friday morning and then another secondary low pressure develops and then we could have these two maybe connect uh, there's another there's a better way of looking at this and i'll show you here in a second but um looks like some kind of low maybe maybe developing right into here and then we just got an area a more just a larger area of a consolidated rain this is actually why i mean the main reason why I canceled the Friday trip to the mountains uh, for us because it looks like it's going to be rainy and dreary up in the mountains. Didn't want to go then, so I'm, I'm very happy that I chose to go yesterday. But here it goes, a, a very soggy start for your Friday for the southeast. And then the rains become more widespread as a low pressure really develops and right over land. And we could get some just some light to moderate, maybe at times heavy rain. We're getting into Saturday morning and look, this is right in the middle of the day Saturday, waking up um, Saturday to rain, and then it becomes more widespread across the northeast for your Saturday. So it's going to be another just, uh, just it's going to be a soaker for certain areas. It really will be. And this really begins to deepen and strengthen um, as it gets over the northeast. So we're waking up Sunday morning, and it's looking like some pretty heavy rain. It's, it has the potential to be there for areas of the northeast, especially Maine. So... How much rain could we expect from this? Well, this is between now and next Monday morning. Uh, like I said, you know, most of the rain, the heaviest rain, is right over New England into Maine. One to two inches of rain is possible. There is a little bit of a dry slot right in here where two of the main pieces of energy gets going. But, um, yeah, looks like a rainy start to your weekend and just a flat-out rainy weekend for a lot 
of the Northeast. As far as the tropics, guys, we're still watching this Invest 94L. It, models differ. And, you know, there's a reason why I have not talked this to death. I mean, like I said, there could be channels out there that really is talking hard on this or have been at some point. But, you know, it, it's just the models just are struggling with this. And either way, even though the Leeward Islands, you know, the you know the british the british virgin islands are are in this cone technically um i, I really don't think this is a, of concern i think that the gfs shows a stronger scenario but remember in this case because there's so much weakness in the north atlantic um you start to get a lot of troughs to get out into the north atlantic and this help uh helps push these tropical systems away this late in the year so you got what would be tammy thursday afternoon it's our next name all right, Tammy, based off the GFS, strengthens into a hurricane. But look as it moves, north misses the islands altogether, which are right in here. We're getting into the later half of the weekend. This is already turning out to sea, even misses Bermuda. And yes, does develop into a hurricane, but it heads on out to sea. Now, the Europeans, totally different. We'll start off in the same time frame. This is 94L, not Tammy at this point. And we'll move into Friday morning. It's just a blob of tropical moisture. Now, this does affect, potentially, areas of the Lesser Antilles, but it's just some tropical downpours. It, it's not much of anything. It's no developed low pressure or, or, or tropical system, and it just brings rain. I mean, now, it could be flooding rain, but it's, it doesn't do anything. It really doesn't as far as an organized tropical system. So you got the GFS that develops this into a full-fledged, like hurricane you got the european that never even makes it to a named storm not even close so that's why i haven't talked about it a whole lot i mean i just don't think it's going to bother landmass and if it does i think it'll maybe just be in the form of showers and storms but i could be totally wrong we saw what happened with that other storm system was it, what, what was it philippe how it just kind of dwindled around it's possible this could do that, so we, I'm still going to keep an eye on it, but I'm not concerned about this for you folks out there. I'm really not. I want to mention this. This is the 6 to 10 day temperature outlook. This runs us through the 22nd to the 26th, so it shows this ridge starting to take over the central portion of the country. Now, guys in Texas, this doesn't mean you're going to get back into the 90s and 100s. I mean, I wouldn't ever rule out 90s in South Texas in October. I mean, for sure, but... Um, you know, remember, we're, we're pretty deep into October at this point, so it's not like this is going to be like what you saw in the summer. Hanging on for to, to the chance or below average temperatures for deer life in the eastern U.S., but you're hanging on. But look what's entering the western U.S., okay? You're starting to ooze back to below average temperatures. It's just the changing. I mean, you can't have a trough over the east forever, and you can't have a ridge over an area forever. Now, I would argue that if you could have... If the weather is going to make one, one thing over an area for an extended period of time, it would be the ridge. But in this case, weather just keeps on moving. The patterns change, and sure enough, here it is. We go to the 8 to 14 day outlook, which almost takes us to the end of the month, uh, October 31st, which it technically is just through the 24th through the 30th, and here it goes. You got a pattern change emerging into the western U.S., Below average temperatures making its way back, and then above average temperatures is beginning to take over most of the central and eastern U.S. Now this will this will change a little bit, but a lot of models are locked on to the idea in the long range that we're going to switch. I think by the end of the month. Now for you cool weather fans, don't get too upset. This happens. It's just totally normal. Totally normal. Um, so. I, I'd rather get all the ridging out the way for the eastern U.S. now, and even though it doesn't work like this, and then get those cooler temperatures for December. To me, guys, if there's one month that I would, if I had to choose one month um, where we could get a winter storm in the deep south and the southeast where I live, it would always be December. Something about snow falling on the Christmas lights um, certainly gets me, man. So um, if I had to pick one month, it would be that month, but typically that's not the case. Typically it's in January and early February. But anyways, guys, thank you all for tuning in. Thank you all for the support. Um, God bless all y'all and have a great Tuesday.